I love that song. There is a fountain filled with blood. Amen. Isn't that great? I love that. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 in our Bibles. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And we'll begin reading in verse 1. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. We're looking at our theme for this year that I've said here for our church of Are You Ready? Are you ready? And I have another message, trying to preach one each month, um, pertaining to this title, this topic, Are You Ready? And today our lesson is this, our message is this, Are You Ready to Hear? Are you ready to hear? That thought comes from verse number one of Ecclesiastes chapter five, where the Bible says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Amen. That means there is a way you are to behave in church. Amen. Yes, point your foot in the direction toward the church and go to church. Amen. We need that. You point your foot in that direction and take yourself to church. Again, remember, this was a culture in which they walked everywhere. But even for us, even if we're not walking, we're still using our foot to push on the accelerator and the brake pedal amen and so um, and yes may I, I might recommend you keep your foot too no need a speeding ticket on the way to um the church but anyway yes point your foot in the direction toward the church but keep yourself keep your foot when you go to the house of god there is a way you are to behave in church. That's why we're talking about this on Sunday night. We're looking at this neo-evangelical movement of where that there are no rules. There are no restrictions. There are no uh, um, um, guidelines that people should go by. Because however you feel you ought to worship the Lord, then well, by all means, have at it. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible tells us. He says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Are you ready for this now? He says, and be more ready to hear. And that's where I get the title of the message from. Ready to hear. He says, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. You see, here's what would happen in the Old Testament is that they would bring a, an animal sacrifice to the priest. The priest would sacrifice that animal and it would then be for the forgiveness of the sins of the people. And so rather than being careful of how they live throughout the week, they just do whatever and say, ah, oh, I'll just bring a animal for the priest. That's what Solomon's referring to here is the sacrifice of fools. He said they don't even consider whether they're doing evil or not. They did that, ah, live whatever, do whatever, cheat this person, take advantage of this situation, whatever. It doesn't matter. That person didn't like what I said. This is that. I just bring a sacrifice and just give it, and then okay, everything's okay. Just take care of it. No, no, no. That's where the Bible tells us also the Lord would rather have us to obey than sacrifice. Ready. He says, ready to hear than to give the sacrifice. Was the sacrifice required by God? Yes, it was required. Was the sacrifice uh, uh, good to do? Yes, it was good to do. Uh, was it important? Yes, because it got the forgiveness of sins. But Solomon says, hey, it'd be better to listen. When you come there and you hear what the priest is saying, are you listening? Are you listening? This would be on Solomon's day. When you're coming and the priest says, stop doing that. Stop coveting what your neighbor has. Stop stealing. Stop whatever it is that it was that they were doing. Are you listening? Are you more ready to hear? Priest, would you tell me what I need to do? Uh, he says, are you more ready to hear? Is that? And again, Solomon, as a king, he would give people instructions and he could tell, he's not going to listen to me. God had given to Solomon more wisdom than any man that has ever lived in the world. And Solomon would give his wisdom and he could look at somebody and say, they're not going to listen. I can just tell. I can see it. They didn't hear me. They didn't pay attention. I can just tell it. They're not going to listen to me. They think what I just told them is foolishness. We read Proverbs now and wow, the wisdom of Solomon. There's some people that they still will, will question the wisdom of Solomon. I mean, can you imagine if Solomon tells people these things that now are written in scripture as he's telling them and then his wife just don't and Solomon could see it. And Solomon could even see it in his own children. As you read through the book of Proverbs, you read where he is saying, my son, listen. He's trying to get his own children to listen to him. Trying to get the nation to listen to him. He wanted people to listen to him. He wanted people to listen to the priest. Because especially as they were listening to the priest, but as they were listening to him as well, they were actually listening 
to God. Solomon had gotten his wisdom and received his wisdom from God. The priests had the, had the Torah. They had the law that had been given to them by God. And so as they listened to the priest, as they listened to Solomon, they were actually listening to God. Yeah. Listen to the prophets. The prophets, they weren't priests. They weren't the king. But yet they also had a message from God. So he's trying to get the people to listen Listen, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice. Now, again, giving the sacrifice was something that involved planning. You just didn't. Uh, and again, that's one of the things in Jesus' day where they were trying to make it easy for the people. They just showed up at the temple. They just buy and sell and exchange right there at the temple. And that's why Jesus overturned the money changers and drove them out. Because it would require forethought of that. They would be raising sheep and they would look at their herd there. They'd look at their flock and they would then pick out the one that met the requirements. The male that was without spot, that was out, without blemish. They would set that aside and they knew it could bring a good a value in the market. But yet they could couldn't sell it. They couldn't eat it. They had to set it aside. It took some forethought, planning ahead, preparing to have a sacrifice to be able to bring. And um, he says, have you put any thought to listening? Have you put any thought into listening? When we come to church, we need to be ready to listen. We need to be ready to block out distractions. When we come to church, don't plan on doing something while you're sitting in church. Again, I don't think anybody is doing that, but don't do that. Don't sit there and say, well, when I'm at church, I'll clip my fingernails. I'll give myself a manicure when I'm at church. I'll bring my clippers along and I'll be able to take care of that. Now, sad to say, I have seen that occasionally. I've seen that where there's fingernail clippings left behind. I go, hmm. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> don't, when you come to church, don't sit there and think I'll make out my shopping list. When you come to church, that's not the time to make out your list of the things to do. Are you ready to hear the word of God? You know you're ready to hear the word of God when you come with your Bible, amen? You want to follow it along, follow along in the word of God. You know you're ready to hear when you have a notebook as, with you as well so that you're ready to write down some things. And of course, we provide a page there with the bulletin and that's great if you if you use that. Uh, but you're, you're prepared, you're thinking ahead, you want to get something from God. You, you come to church, you say, Lord, I need you to speak to my heart. Be more ready to hear when you come to the house of God. Now, here's the amazing thing about our bodies. In order to really hear, you have to control your tongue. It's amazing how that works with us because when your tongue is a wagon and your tongue is a flapping and your jaws are going up and down and your lips are helping to form the sounds, it's amazing of how that the ears just kind of go to sleep. Well, they might hear some kind of a noise and if somebody else is talking, then uh, uh, naturally inside you have something saying, talk louder. It's just amazing how that works of how when the tongue is moving, then the ears, it's, it's hard to hear. It's hard to really understand what someone is saying. And so that's why, again, a preacher will say, hey, quit talking. You can see people talking. Hey, stop that. Why? Because he knows that when your tongue is moving, then you're not hearing the word of the Lord. In order to hear, we've got to control our tongue. It's kind of like our push and pull muscles. We have muscles with which we use to push things and we have muscles with which we use to pull things. They, they, they're all in the body and they all uh, get used, but if a person just exercises the push muscles, then their pull muscles are not going to be as strong. And if they just exercise the pull muscles, then the push muscles are not as strong. Uh, but when you're pushing something, then your pull muscles are, are somewhat relaxed. And when you're pulling something, your push muscles are then relaxed. It's the same with our tongue in our ears as we get to talking we don't hear but if we can learn to keep our mouth closed if we can learn to keep our tongue still it's amazing then how our ears can open up and we can hear verse 2 he says be not rash with thy mouth 
but we could just stop right there. And that right there is convicting enough for each one of us. Because if we're not careful, our tongue can be very hurtful. Our tongue can say things very quickly. If we're not careful, we can say things and then later say, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Wow. Isn't that a great reminder to us? Oh yeah, I'm not the one in heaven. I'm not the one on the throne. Sometimes people need to be reminded that they're not God. And by the way, this is Solomon speaking. He is the most powerful man in the world in his time. And yet he's, he's saying, I'm on earth. There's a God in heaven who's even more powerful than me. And he says, therefore, let thy words be few. Verse three, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. The more you're involved with something, the more you think about it. The more you begin realizing that how you can do it better. You realize you, you do something through a multitude of business and you begin thinking about it and you say, oh, you know what? I should have painted it this color. Or I should have put this as far as support or I should have put a nail in here or I should have put a screw in here, whatever. The more you're busy doing things, you begin thinking about it. A dream. And sometimes we'll even, we will dream about our work. Here's another thing that's interesting about our hearing. We hear, we listen with our ears, we hear with our ears, we also listen and we can hear when we read. When you're reading the Bible, God can speak to you. When you're reading a book, the author is speaking to you. We hear and we listen with our ears. We also can hear and we can listen as we read. We also can hear and listen as we observe. You know, you can watch a person's facial expressions. You can watch their body language. You can read, you can learn a lot. You can hear a lot about what a person is saying um, uh, by more than just their words, by more than just what they have written. You can watch their expressions. Um, it says a lot just by observation. We listen as we hear. We listen as we read. We listen as we observe. It's important for us to watch the way other people handle things, the way other people do things. We can learn as we watch that, as we listen. And uh, many times we've heard this, were you not watching? You get kids at school and they're all doing something. There's one kid doing something else. Well, I don't know what to do. Were you not watching everybody else and seeing what they did? Were you not paying attention? You can hear, you can learn by listening. You can hear, you learn by reading. You can hear, you learn by observing. And then you can also hear, listen by thinking, by thinking. This is what he says here when he says, for a dream come through the multitude of business. As you think about things, you're listening, you're hearing. Because here's something important for us to know. There's three people that we need, three different uh, people there that we need to listen to. Number one, we need to listen to the Lord. We need to hear when he's speaking to us. He has got to be first and foremost of who we listen to. We've got to listen to the Lord. He gives us commandments. And not only that, he gives us doctrine. As we're reading the Bible, we're going to find out God's instructions for our lives. But then we're also going to find out the doctrines which pertain to our salvation. The doctrines which are going to lead to eternity. The doctrines of the things of which we should believe. Things that are facts in life. Um, um, we learn of these things doctrines we learn of these commandments and these doctrines so we need to listen to the Lord not only that we need to be ready to listen to others we need to hear our parents we need to hear a, a husband needs to listen to his wife a wife needs to listen to her husband parents need to listen to their children and hear what's really going on in their life there's too much where there's just not listening not observing 
not watching, not paying attention to what's going on. We need to listen to others because they will offer instructions and they will offer advice. We need to listen to them as they will say, this is the way that you ought to do it. And then they may give us advice and maybe not say, this is what you should do. But they'll say, well, here's something to think about. Here's something what I did. They can give us instructions. They can give us advice. And then, are you ready to this, for this? We listen to the Lord. We listen to others. We need to be ready to listen to ourself. To listen to our own mind. We need to listen to ourselves because God has given to each one of us instincts. He's given to each one of us uh, uh, to where that we see a situation and we can immediately tell something's not right about that. Learn to listen to yourself. How many times have we seen something and we thought, boy, that just doesn't look quite right. And then later we regret it and we say, I wish I would have done that. And I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have gone there. I knew I shouldn't have gotten into that boat. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done this or that, whatever it is. We had an instinct, but we did not listen to ourselves. We have imaginations, or as it says here, dreams. We have to where we can think about things ourselves, to where we can say, you know, if I did this, this would be better. I wonder how many inventions could have been made if somebody would have just followed through on their imagination, their idea. That's another way of putting this. Their ideas that came to way. We've got to learn to listen to ourselves. God's made every one of us were important. God's given each one of us a different perspective on life, and that's how we help one another. We see things from a just a little bit different of a perspective of things, and we have ideas, and we have to value others' ideas, and we have to value our own ideas as well, and we have to put these ideas together, and you can't think then that just your ideas are better than someone else's ideas, but yet what I'm trying to encourage you to do is at least listen to yourself. Have a little confidence in yourself. It's easy to begin thinking, oh, I don't know anything. Oh, yeah, you do. You can think, you can apply yourself as well. Now, here's what we have to do. We have to turn off the noise. Just like you can't hear when your tongue is going, you can't think when there's noise. That's the hard part in our life is to turn off the noise. But we need a little quiet time where we can just get alone and we can think and we can listen to ourselves. But also the Lord has given to us a conscience and our conscience will help to guide us and to direct us and to where if we did something we shouldn't have, we'll feel guilty about it. Listen to that. If your conscience is speaking to you and saying you should not have said that to that person. Now it can also be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. But if you hear that in your mind that I should not have said that, we'll go to them and ask them for forgiveness. Learn to listen to yourself. If your mind tells you and says, don't, don't say anything. I wouldn't answer. Listen. How many times we can just go forward and then later, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said anything. We've got to learn to listen to ourselves. Listen to our own conscience. So we need to listen to the Lord. We need to listen to others. And we need to listen to ourselves. Go back to verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3. It says, for a dream coming through the multitude of business and a, you ready for this? A fool's voice is known. By multitude of words. The more you keep talking, the more people will think, what a fool. What an idiot. The more you keep talking. There's a wise saying that says this, it's better to keep your mouth shut and let everybody think that you are a fool than to open your mouth and to remove all doubt. Right. Everybody goes, yep, sure enough. He's a fool. It's better just to be quiet. And people think, boy, they don't know much about him. That'd be better than to open your mouth and then they say, oh yeah, sure enough, you don't know what you think. There's all kinds of good little wise sayings. I like this one too, that those who think they know it all are annoying, especially those of us who do know it all. Amen. <laughs> But we've all been there before. We've, I've been riding in church vans before with young people. I'm thinking of one young man in particular. 
Now I can remember we were riding around and the whole time that we're traveling, his mouth is going and talking and he knows about every single thing and he's talking and talking and talking and talking. A fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Can you be quiet? Can you be quiet? Parents will ask their kids that. Can you be quiet? And if they can't be quiet, then they'll say, shut up! <laughs> that means there's no longer a can you be quiet, but I am telling you, <laughs> zip it. <laughs> but can you? I wonder sometimes if people, they're just always talking in their car, just always, I mean, every time you get around them, they're just talking, 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 talking. Can you just be quiet? Your dog probably looks at you and goes, can you just be quiet? Your cat probably looks at you and says, can you just be quiet? But then can we be in the quiet too? Of where we don't have the TV and the radio and everything else, whatever it might be just going on. Can we just be quiet? Oh, I know we've all felt this before to where we get in our car and it's just, oh, it's just quiet. You can hear that. Except the engine going clunk, 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 clunk. But anyway, you're driving along and it's just, oh. Finally, think, think, quiet. Let me move on. When thou vowest to vow, verse 4, unto God defer not to pay it. What does that involve again? Again, a person's running their mouth. And so he says, okay, if you ran your mouth and you vow a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. This was in the Old Testament. By the way, in the New Testament, we're not to make vows. Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay nay. But in the Old Testament, they made vows. And he says, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Verse six, he says, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. And your mouth can cause you to sin. Your mouth can write checks your body can't cash. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't allow your mouth, suffer not your mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Now an angel is not just referring to a, you know, as we think of him, a guy with wings that comes down, an angel from heaven. Angel means a messenger. So he says when there's a messenger that's been sent, you don't want to then have to say before the angel or the messenger, oh, it was an error. It was a mistake. Oh, I really didn't mean to promise that I was going to give this amount of money. It's just better just don't promise it. Or otherwise, when the messenger comes to collect, you go, oh, no, I made a mistake. I really didn't mean that. I was meeting next year. He says, no, just, just keep your mouth shut. Just, just don't make promises if you don't have any intention of, of fulfilling it. He says, wherefore, should God be angry at thy voice? And destroy the work of thy hands. You know, God's not angry with us as we're listening. Of course, if we're listening to the wrong thing, we shouldn't be doing that. But God's not angry with us. Listen, you know where God gets angry is as we keep talking. That's where God gets angry as we're as we keep talking, we keep saying what our thoughts instead of his thoughts. He says, verse 7: For in the multitude of dreams and many words. There are also diverse vanities. And a vanity, of course, is something that's just worthless. A lot of dreams, they're just worthless. Just dreams. People, what is the meaning of my dream? That means this. You have a vain mind. That's what your dream means. Yeah. What do I have? Three cats, and those three cats, they were all chasing a bird, but the bird got away. What does that dream mean? That means you have a vain mind. That's what it means. It doesn't mean anything. It's vanity. And by the way, that's the way a lot of words are as well. Nothing. And so then he ends it and he says, but fear thou God. Now I mentioned this just briefly, but anyway, don't listen to anything that is sinful. And don't listen to anything that is false. Don't. If you know something is sinful, don't listen to it. If you hear music and you know it's sinful, don't listen to it. If you're watching something on TV and you know it's sinful, don't listen to it. Uh, whatever it might be, don't listen to it. You're listening to someone give you advice and you know it's wrong, it's sinful, it's not according to the Word of God. Don't listen to it. You know, don't listen to anything that's sinful. And don't listen to anything that's false. We have a real problem in our country with fake news. 
No, the truth of the matter is, is our country with all its technology is some of the, we are some of the most ignorant people in the world. Because all we get is propaganda. That's what we get is propaganda. I mean, when you watch one channel, and I love how they do, they call them montages of where they'll play, and they'll show somebody on the news, and on this channel, they say the same thing, and then this channel, they say the same thing, and this channel, they say the same thing, and this channel, they say the same thing, and you go down through there, and you begin realizing, wait a minute, they're all telling the same thing, the same news, and you hear that, and so if something is false, don't listen to it. If you know there's people on there that make you angry, quit listening to it. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, they said, okay, we'll just stop listening to it. You know it's false anyway. Don't listen to it. And by the way, the same goes for preaching. Oh, but it's the Bible. Yeah, it's false. Quit. You don't need to study with this religion and that religion. Well, I just want to get a good No, stop. Don't, don't listen to anything that's false. If it's not true, don't listen to it. Here's something else about listening. We've got to learn to listen and not react. Our natural reaction is to react. But listen, why don't you listen to what somebody's saying instead of just reacting? We've got to learn to listen instead of guessing. <laughs> How many times have we tried to guess what somebody's saying right in the middle of their sentence? And they go, that's not what I was going to say. We've got to learn to try to listen instead of just guessing. And then we've got to learn to listen instead of assuming. Yeah. They could be saying, for my birthday, I want a fishing pole. And we just assume, no, they don't really want a fishing pole. They want socks. And we get them socks and they go, okay, thank you. I assume that's what you wanted. Yeah, I was telling you I wanted a fishing pole. <laughs> We've got to learn to listen instead of just assume we know what people want. We've got to listen without interrupting. Oh, that's hard. But we've got to learn to listen to people without interrupting them. You'll hear things as somebody is saying something, and it'll remind you of something that happened back in the good old days, back in the glory days, back when you were in high school, and you want to interrupt them and say, oh, yeah, let me tell you, back when I was in high school in the 80s, we uh, stop, listen to what they had to say. Don't interrupt. Listen without, oh, this is really hard. Listen without daydreaming. By the way, that applies especially at church. We have to program ourselves to listen without daydreaming. I like a funny thing that I saw here, I don't know, a month or so ago, but there was a man who all of a sudden was panicking because he realized his wife was still talking. And he knew that as soon as she's done, she's going to then begin asking him questions. <laughs> and his mind began daydreaming. And now he's all of a sudden panicking because he realized he was not paying attention. He was daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got to learn to listen without daydreaming. Students in school have to learn to focus without the daydreaming. And you find your mind daydreaming, bring it back under control. And then a little bit later, you'll find your mind daydreaming, bring it back under. And you'll realize as you do that, then you'll catch yourself quicker and quicker and quicker. When your mind starts to wander, you'll quickly bring it back. No, I need to stay focused. But it's going to take discipline to get that under control, to listen without interrupting, to listen without daydreaming, to listen without distractions. Again, it's hard to hear when there's distractions. And so when my wife comes into the room to tell me something, guess what I have to do? I need to pause the TV. I need to sit down on my phone. I need to look at her. I need to focus on her and say, yes. Because it's awfully odd how your wife can then start a conversation by saying, are you listening to me? <laughs> if your wife wants to start a conversation by saying, are you listening to me? That means she didn't start the conversation by saying that. That means that after a few minutes of speaking, she realized you aren't listening. <laughs> Amen. Parents have to do that with their kids too. Are you listening to me? Huh? They pull the headphone thing off. Huh? What? They turn around. Didn't hear a word. We've got to learn to listen without distractions. When somebody comes and they want to tell us something, put down the distractions, turn and Focus. A part of listening is asking questions. Not always do we understand right away when somebody says something. Part of listening is asking questions. Now, wait a minute, was that on Tuesday? Part of questions and listening is asking questions. Part of listening is even asking them to repeat something. Wait, wait could you say that again? Back that up there. I thought, wait a minute, did you just say you wanted to paint that room purple? Did I hear that right? Can you back up just a second again? Can you say that again? Did I hear? Part of listening is asking questions, even asking them maybe to repeat something. 
And part of listening is repeating what they said. They tell you something, repeat it back to them. And I'm not meaning like you're doing something back and forth, you know, like repeat after me back and forth. But I'm saying when they have finished, they've said it, then you repeat back to them. Oh, wow, okay, yes, okay. So you want to um, go here or whatever. You can repeat that back to them. That lets them know you are listening. To hear, to truly hear, you need to understand every word. To truly hear, you need to understand every concept. Sometimes people will say things that it doesn't mean it literally. It's just an expression. You need to understand the concept. To hear, you must understand how it affects you. To hear, you must understand also of how it affects others. If you don't understand what they're saying of how it affects you, you weren't listening. If you don't understand what they told you of how it affects others, you, didn't, you weren't listening. So you have to ask yourself, how is this affecting me? Why are they telling me this? How does this affect me? How does this influence me? How does this affect somebody else? Maybe they're telling me something that's going to affect my children, my wife. I've got to process all of this information. This is why I need to keep my tongue quiet because I've got it. There's a lot I have to process here as they're telling me something. Hearing says, I don't know everything. When you're quiet and you're listening, you're telling that person, I don't know everything. Hearing says, what you know is important to me. You've got to listen because it tells that person that what they're saying is important. Hearing says, I am ready to learn. And hearing also says, I am ready to change. Somebody can be coming with some instructions of what we need to change and when you listen, that says, I'm ready to make the necessary changes. The Bible tells the people who wouldn't listen. Psalm 58, verses three through five says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stop at the ear, which will not hearken to the voice of the charmers, charming never so wisely. You can just imagine a bunch of kids playing and then there's a cobra about to, to strike and they would bring somebody out that would have his little flute and he would play his little musical thing and the snake would listen and the charmer could lead the snake back into the woods and nobody would get hurt. But if there's a deaf snake and the charmer is there and he's playing his music and the deaf, the, the, the deaf serpent still strikes and wouldn't listen, even though the charmer's playing, playing the best and playing wisely and doing everything exactly right. But the problem was the snake, it couldn't listen. It wouldn't hear, and we can be that way as well, to where we don't hear, and we have a, a wife that's giving us good instructions, giving us good advice, but yet we won't listen. And then we do something with our children to our children, maybe punish a little too um, strong of what they've done. We won't listen. And then we, we strike because we're not listening. We don't listen to our own conscience when it's telling us, stop, don't say that, don't do that. We don't listen and we're the deaf snake and we cause destruction through our, our words and our actions. Why? Because we're not listening. That was Psalm 58 verses 3 through 5. Isaiah 6 and verse 10 says, make the heart of his people fat and make their ears heavy. The Bible describes a person who wouldn't listen as their ears being heavy. Oh, it's so hard to just lift up my ears like we have big elephant ears. And oh, it's just so hard to lift them up and to listen. And so I'm just not even going to hear. Jeremiah 6, 10 says, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. That's the way the Lord described it again to a Jew that was an abomination. And yet God was saying, that's the way that your ear is. It's an abomination to me. In Zechariah 7, 11, but they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. We've all done that at some time or another, put our fingers in our ears and maybe even go da 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 because we're showing if I'm making noise, I can't hear. Plus I have my fingers in my ears. I don't want to hear what you have to say. That's the way that the prophet Zechariah felt. And by the way, that was fulfilled also in the New Testament in Acts 7, 57. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. That was with Stephen. Um, in Mark chapter 4 and verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Understand, we don't listen we can be missing out on forgiveness from God. I didn't know that was wrong. That's because you weren't listening. We can be missing out in our relationship with God, in our fellowship, I should say. Our fellowship with God is hindered because we're not listening. 
Mark 8 verse 18 says, Having eyes see not, having ears hear ye not. Do you not yet remember Acts 28, 27? For the heart of this people is whacked gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. That's the way the Bible describes it there as being dull of hearing. Um, and they did it on purpose there. It says their eyes are closed as they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. If we're not willing to listen, our marriage cannot be healed. If we're not willing to listen, our fellowship with our children cannot be healed. If we're not willing to listen, our fellowship with other friends cannot be healed. If we're not willing to listen, Again, life has misunderstandings. We've got to be willing to listen and work things out. And if we're not willing to listen, it cannot be healed. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 4, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hebrews 5 and verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. I have a couple of verses I want us to look at here. Look at Matthew 13. Go over to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15. Matthew 13 and verse 15. The Bible says, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. That's what I read from Mark earlier. He says in verse 16, Matthew 13, 16, But blessed are your eyes, for they see in your ears, for they here. When you listen, God says you're blessed. Verse 17, you notice this, he says, Matthew 13, 17, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. Are you ready for this now? And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. There are people that would love to be able to hear the preaching of the word of God, but they live in a country where they're not allowed to preach the word of God. There are people who would love to hear the preaching of the word of God, but they live in a country or they live in a city where there are no churches, where no one has gone and started a church. But we have the word of God, and yet we don't want to listen to it. There's people that would love to hear, but yet they're not able to hear. There's some people that would love to be at church, but due to their job, whatever it might be, sickness, uh, uh, health reasons, whatever, they're not able to be here. But yet we're able to be here. We need to take advantage of this situation because I promise you this one day there's going to come a time where you're going to wish you could hear their voice one more time. You're going to wish you could hear your husband one more time. You're going to wish you could hear your wife one more time. You're going to wish you could hear your children one more time. You're going to wish you could hear your preacher one more time. You're going to wish you could hear just one more time. So we need to take advantage of that opportunity while we have it today. Oh, I got another verse I want us to look at. Turn to James chapter 1, verse 19. While you're turning there, I'm going to read you another verse. I was going to look at this, but for the sake of time, let me just quote it to you. In Proverbs 18, verse 13, the Bible says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is a folly and shame unto him. Proverbs 18, 13. If you hear something, you, you give an answer before you fully heard it, it's a folly and shame when you listen to people. Look what the Bible says in James 1, verse number 19. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I can't say it any better. Of course, all these Bible verses, I can't say it any better than what's written. That's plain. That's easy to understand. Swift to hear. Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Are you ready to hear? Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you will help us to be ready to listen. Ready to listen to you. Lord, may we never have a hard heart where we close our ears and not listen to you. Lord, may we be ready to listen to those around us as well. One day we're going to wish we could hear it one more time. We're going to find ourselves in a bad situation and we're going to wish we would have listened a little bit closer and a little bit more on those instructions. Lord, help us to 
listen to our own mind. Lord, you gave us a, a working mind and a conscience. And gave us where we can think of ideas. And, uh, uh, Lord, you've given us instincts. Lord, help us to learn to listen to ourselves. Not put ourselves above anybody else, but at least to listen to what you have um, uh, put in us. Please, Lord, bless and help us. Help us to be ready to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. This is our time where we can.